on today's episode of Delusions of Automotive Grandeur, Stephen fears for his life in an RX-7, Brent talks about a 99 Cavalier with racing stripes, and Charlie, he wants to make sure his sound levels are good. Strap in, it's time for Dag Show. This is Delusions of Automotive Grandeur um, for all of you watching. I guess the camera's there. And we're, we switched to video now. And, and uh, you know, we're just going to give it a shot like this. You know, we're all, like as Brent was saying a little bit ago, we were all, we're all socially distanced and uh, hanging in there. And if you've endured any of the podcasts, you kind of know some things about us. But we might as well, since this is a new way to do things with video and everything, sort of start over and, and sort of lay it out there, you know. Um, did any of y'all want to go first to talk about, you well, know, I was, like, I was just going to add in and, that there will be an audio portion of this as well oh, going yeah. up on Spotify and iTunes. We have both been approved for both overall. So for now, until they hear is, it and then they're going to be like, no. exactly. Until they like, nah, nah. Wherever you get good. all your, your podcast uh, needs fulfilled. So yeah. I we're all figured, about fulfilling people's I, needs. I, I figure yeah, iTunes and Spotify are going to be your main two and I can put up a link to download as well if you want to go that way. But, um, Perfect. you know, those are the main two. And then, uh, of course, video is going to be on YouTube. Yep. So, cool. So, Brent, what's, uh, why don't you go first, Brent? Tell us about, like, what cars you've got and um, sort of, you know, how, how you sort of got into cars and, you know, just what's, what's the deal with you, man? The year was 1985. Wait, <laughs> I wasn't even born yet. Um no, I would say when I was 16 overall, um, you know, got my first car, got my license all at the same time, basically. And I had a 1999 Chevy Cavalier. Um, Did it have stripes? It was not fun. It, it, I, I did put stripes on it. <laughs> Good man. Good I man. didn't know that I guessed everyone. Um, I did put stripes on it, so there's that. Um, let's see. I'll just go through it. Um, I it, I didn't really want the Cavalier, being from upstate New York and having like 130 inches of snow every year and so on. It was not fun. Um, so I think it was like March. February time frame of the first year having the car ended up hitting a snow drift in a car, in in the middle of the road basically and it just took me right into the uh, shoulder. And you were doing a scandy flick? No. Okay. It was on a straight line overall too. That's the worst part. Okay. Um, and took me straight into the uh, snowbank basically and got me so oh. stuck. My dad's truck couldn't even get me out. Oh wow! Okay. That, that um, off uh, oversteer will get you every time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we were. My dad and I were sitting there in the truck waiting for the tow truck to show up, and basically, I sat there and I looked over him. And I'm like, "Cars for sale." I'm getting a Subaru. So, um, oh. I think it was two months later. My, I was at work one day and my parents called. They're like, we found a car. We found a car. We found a car for you. I'm like, mm, okay. I, I don't know what to expect here, but I'll, I'll go with it. So I went out and test drove it, looked at it. I'm like, eh, it's okay. When I got home that night, though, that's when, that's when everything changed. Um, I was going to make a joke about things. Never mind. Just it, I, I, I wasn't a big fan of it at first, but, you know, I found uh, a website called uh, um, rs25.org, or is it .com now? I forget. I haven't been on there in forever, but um, I found that and just fell in love with the Subaru Impreza 2.5 RS back before the WRX came out in the US. Um, it, it's, it's basically 
the footage that you see of Colin McRae driving, it's that style car. Um, the 22B is, you know, basically that car, just wide body, so on and so forth. And um, once I saw that, once I saw what everybody was doing to the car and everything else, I just fell in love and I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, please yes. give me more cars. Yes, I'll take it. Um, and, you know, the first day that I actually had the car on the road and on, I drove it more or less. Um, it was for my high school graduation. Oh, wow. Cool. So it has a little bit of meaning to it. And still to this day, 12 years later, 13, 13. That makes you really um, old, by the way. <laughs> uh, 13 years right. now, I have... I still have the car overall. Um, it might be sitting in a barn needing some stuff, but there's, there's plans for it in the future for sure. Um, you know, I, I ended up going to school in DC overall and didn't need a car um, there. Well, could have used the car, but I wasn't able to more or less. Um, and moved to New York after that as well. Same thing, didn't need a car. When I moved back down to DC the second time after um, I ended up, I actually looked at a Mini Cooper S at one point, test drove it, it was okay. Um, it was a little bit more than what I would have probably paid for it. So I just kind of brushed it off and kept going with it, you know, just walk into work and whatnot and then um you didn't skip to work no what and whistle or, 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 or i took the bus all right i can just see you skipping and whistling to work in new york somewhere man sorry go no, ahead. this was this was back in dc at this oh point. dc sorry that's better um so yeah i um the dealership closest to me they had there was a couple BMWs on my list too, a three series, a 325 and a 135. 135 was way out of my price range anyways, and it had turbo issues. So I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. Uh, the one, or sorry, 128, uh, or no, 220. I, I hate BMW where they switched everything up. Um, I can't think of any other companies that numerical code issues. But the 328. It was okay, but it was a boat. It just was way too big, hated it. Yeah. Just it, it was just way too big for a coupe overall on that order with no power at all. Um, and then an Audi A4 came up. I'm like, okay, okay. Um, and I think the first time I came out to Cars and Coffee for Charlottesville, I did have that. And I believe I met you, Charlie, when we were, when I was there. So I had that for about a, about a year again. Um, and then I got sick and tired of it because I had some issues and ended up trading it in for a Subaru BRZ. Never heard of Audis having issues. Before. No, never. No, no Volkswagen brand has issues. No, <laughs> it's um, it's designed that way it's fine yeah yeah it's yeah so i had the brz for how long five years no four years overall basically full bolt-on suspension done you know that that side of things overall um and then now moved out to la um and the car's a little the car was a little bit too low for some of the roads out here if you weren't careful so i ended up getting a mini cooper s that's what we currently drive out here now nice so yeah so have the mini cooper s and a 2000 subaru 2.5 rs that is well. what color is the so, Subaru? uh blue ridge pearl that's that's the color, right? It's it's the dark blue metallic color. Okay, I'm trying to remember how it's 
it's not rally blue that everybody okay. knows of. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm okay with dark blue cars. Right. It's, it's an amazing color. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, I would, I'm keeping it that color regardless yeah. of what I do. Um, it's, it's got a really cool flake to it where it has almost like a purplish hint to it. So, you know, at certain times it might actually look purple compared to like a dark blue, but it's, it's right out there. It's, I love it. Nice. So, yeah. Let's go on to Charlie. All right. Um, and just for sound check, uh, we're good on good. levels. So cool, cool. Uh, yeah. So I've kind of, I only got into it kind of late in life, not, not a forever, uh, thing, but I've always been into like doing it, do it yourself projects and things like that. Like was, uh, I remember like an early car pro like when I was 16, like, I got my the keys to my my mom's like Honda Accord EX whatever, um, and ended up like me and my dad like completely gutting it doing interior carpet and uh, doing a head unit and like just keeping it simple. But you know the car had already been like a car me and my brother like were driven to and from places and and like just completely destroyed the interior of that car. Like it, we drove up and down the East coast with it. Um, so I had plenty of miles and it was like, eh, just, uh, so I, you know, kind of got started that way, uh, getting into automotive, uh, pursuits that way. My dad was always also a, like a home, like shade tree mechanic. Uh, he's an electrician by trade and he was always tinkering with, like, I think he actually has some background in like, uh, customized vans. Cause he's of that era. Uh, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I'm, I'm fairly certain he's like installed like shag carpet and like port <laughs> windows and Little tassels. Oh, I'm sure of it. Like, I mean, he, he's got stories and it's one, it's just a challenge to get all of them out of him. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so like I remember we had we had the van like way back in the day with the carpet inside and the no seats, no seat belts, uh, and the port, big port windows to watch traffic go by. Um, but yeah, like he was always wrenching on that, or then he got a truck and he was wrenching on that, and then the you know our we had like a between me, my brother, and my mom had a fleet of various Honda civics or accords and um but yeah then i've came out to you know went to college drove the honda through college um mostly just keep it running um uh, and then that car ended up had a kind of a miserable end of life um the last few years but it was just an old car at that point so it's kind of whatever um uh, like drove the wheel off of it um due to some improperly uh, installed uh, uh, lug nuts and things like that um, from a local shop that was. Uh, Did you actually have the thing where you're driving and you see the wheel going along? You're like, whose wheel is that? Like, oh yeah, I definitely, had, I definitely had the, the Bugs Bunny moment. <laughs> it, was, it was more of a like, you know, a lot of noise and then suddenly no noise. Mm. And like, it's that second of no noise where you're like, what's gonna happen next? Like what just, <laughs> Finally, calamity and then, well, i definitely had like, that on a go-kart once yeah you like look yeah, over and the right. wheels like still rolling and you're like yeah. uh yeah double taking um yep. but yeah somewhere on uh 64 westbound and uh between richmond and charlottesville there's a might be a honda accord wheel uh, <laughs> for hundreds of years it will be there <laughs> uh, god please i hope so uh <laughs> that'll be a great contribution uh, but yeah so that car got resprayed I drove it in another two weeks and like this was very such a clear like marked end of life for that car that I ended up like rear-ending someone because I was distracted by another vehicle and it ended up folding the hood in folding uh, the radiator support the best part was the car was actually uh, 
the only the shop was so shitty about it. They're like, oh yeah, we'll get you covered. We'll respray it. They only resprayed half the car. Um, so it looked like brand new on one side and 20 years old on the other. Just two, just two faces. It was like side to side, not front to back. Like Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like you could literally look at like driver's side. Oh, wow. It's a fresh, fresh paint job. You so those are the side, that's the side you took pictures from when you were selling it? <laughs> uh, I still, I don't even think I took a photo of, of yeah. that. I was like, uh, here's like some bad cell phone photos. Like get mechanic special, 300 bucks, come get it. Some, some guy came, I actually saw it driving around uh, months after that. I was like, I'm so, so stoked to see this thing still running. It still had all my stickers on it. Cause of course I was like a college, you know, college and post just after college. Uh, like, Oh, a sticker in the back of my windshield. And now I'm like, no stickers, please. Um, but yeah, and then I got into Volkswagens. I uh, had a, one of the dirt, uh, notorious dirty diesels, uh, a Jetta uh, 2010. Um, got into like the like TDI club and uh, Vortex and stuff like that. Um, doing little mods here and there, tinkering. Um, and then I switched over and got a GTI because that's what I wanted in the first place. And, um, haven't really looked back since and have done plenty of, uh, little and big mods to that. And, um, uh, yeah, it's Mark pretty, seven, right? Yeah. It's Mark seven, 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, been fun, fun. I've been a part of those communities and, uh, you know, done a little bit of the like, tuning boxes and a little bit of, uh, those like off the shelf tune stuff and, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of my, say my like broad overview of what I've I've dabbled with. I don't um, think I realized that you you'd gone that you had such a, a lineage with a Honda. Yeah, we had yeah we had like a three Honda household at one point. It was uh, I actually remember talking. I think I remember talking my mom into looking at the. Uh, it was a 2004 Honda Civic with the hybrid. It was like maybe the second year they got the hybrid. Early one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like, yeah, Priuses were like becoming big. And I was like, you want a Honda, you want a hybrid, like go for it. Um, and that was a, you know, I think my first experience with uh, the CBTs and how awful those are. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, especially those early ones had to like, there's so much like weird maintenance stuff that like, I remember the transmission on it was never smooth. Like after the first like 50,000 miles, it just clunked into whenever you were trying to get into a gear, um, which like also was like, wait, it's supposed to be a CVT of some sort. Like why, is why it... am I sensing shift points? <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't like feel that. Like, yeah, it was, it was a rough, uh, it's definitely one of those ones of like, oh, like, sort of putting it in my mind of like, I will never own that Honda or a similar like generation. I was like, started becoming a little more wary. Um, so I got into a bigger troublemaker with the Volkswagen. So, you know. Cool. Uh, yeah. Well, um, hi, I'm Stephen. Uh, party people. Hello, Stephen. And uh, how's it going, guys? Um, hey. And uh, I, yeah, my my background is. Uh, cars I've had and you know how I got into it all is a really simple way to get to say how I got into is that my grandfather was a uh, a bomber mechanic in uh in World War II I should say bombers really just anything with a radial engine that was coming through he was uh technically in the navy and he's like 18 and 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 because of that like my entire childhood in visiting him in, in northern Ohio which is a huge car culture as well you know um was his garage and and I can still smell his garage like I can I, to this I know ex I can smell it and stuff in that, have that smell it's it's yes can you smell that smell sorry copyrighted um but uh no he he had a 46 Willys Jeep and a 31 Model A and a 68 Ford Fairlane convertible in sort of an aqua metallic blue now the Model A took him 20 years to restore he had no money he got the Amish to like hand sew an interior for it. 
Um, the Willie's Jeep is is beautiful and amazing and glorious, but it's you know it's it's home done. It's you know the, he was he's a he's a mechanic, so the engine was rebuilt amazingly, but it's brushed paint, you know, and yeah. cr crudely hand painted Willie's in red, you know, over the the tan background, and um, and the Ford was just sort of a mess, the convertible, and you know, but just the the idea and, and having that sort of person that's sort of like an icon for you that you sort of idolize and and that smell of grease, you know. Uh, and that, that plus my, uh, my uncle Jim, who also, he, he worked at Ford for like 40 years and he's just got piles of cars all over the place. So it's just, you just idolize the people like that and it gets in your blood. And my dad has a killer, uh, 79 RX seven, which he's had longer than he's had me. Um, and it's still in the family and, and that's another sort of contributing factor. So, you know, my first car, which if any of you have, uh, endured the, anyone listening or watching has endured the, some of the original podcasts, um, I've got a whole story about it was, um, you know, a 91 Ford Tempo with genuine Canadian vinyl interior, um, pretty badass. Um, and uh, it, uh, you know, four door automatic white gray interior just, and had a luggage rack. But um, that was the first car I had, you know, and just the idea of being free and being able to go where you want to go, even if, you know, the car wasn't in my name or anything and I wasn't going anywhere fast, but you know, that just, it locks it down. You already have all these people you idolize, you know, grandfather, uncle, dad, yeah. and they're into this. And then, you have your first taste of actually going out and doing it. It's just the best. I remember going 45 for the first time being like, Oh my God, <laughs> it's so fast. So, so it sounds like you, you know, what I am, you know, and someone correct me if I'm kind of uh, mistaken this synopsis, but uh, I'd say you have like 100% you coming from a family of petrol heads. Uh, you know, it's kind of been born into it, so to speak. Yep. I, you know, loosely I was born into it, but not like, you know, my dad has never bought a fun car. He's <laughs> always bought a van or a truck. Um, yeah. And, you know, and they're pretty much all the same. Like, I don't even, I honestly don't know if my dad, like, actually tried to, like, shop around for his truck. Like, the last one he bought, I think he literally walked on a lot and was like, give me a truck. Um, <laughs> and that one. Basically, he was like, I'm ready to buy today. Here's, yeah, it's, and that's a whole other story for another day. That was a, that's a funny one. Um, Brent, do you have, you know, it sounds like your passion has kind of been brought forward from your own interests. Is that, would you, or do you have, did I, did um, I? It's been a mix, I would say. Okay. Um, because my dad's always been into classic cars overall and um, growing up until oh man um, I'm just trying to think of how old I was probably 13 maybe 14 or so yeah. um, we had a 57 Chevy out in the barn basically cool, um, cool. America <laughs> like you have a barn yeah. And it has a 57 Chevy in it. That's America. Yeah. It's required. Um, and I mean, when, when I was young, and I would say probably more so before I remember, um, I do know the car was running and everything, but then I came along. You, you know what I mean? Where, you know. Yeah. It's all Brent's fault. My dad, my dad didn't really have the time to work on everything. Yeah. 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 Um, so it was just kind of put on the back burner and just sat there and sat there and then he sold it um and then a little bit other back history i mean i've helped out with car shows before um especially a major one up in syracuse um the syracuse nationals um and which is just basically all classic cars um from everywhere literally i mean there will be cars coming from southern california that will drive over and go to this show um and i mean you're talking a good probably ten thousand cars usually Jeez. um yeah that's wild and i remember i was helping out at the show so i kind of snuck my dad in and we walked around for a little bit when i was you know kind of taking a little bit of break whatever and um we were walking walking and he's like that's my car. Like, 
what? <laughs> and when we left it or when the guy bought it, it was all white. Um, and then the original coloring of it was red with the white fin on the back more so. Um, but when we had it, it was just all white. And when, um, when he, he saw it, it was back to original red, white, everything was basically original. Um, and you could tell he kind of regretted selling the car. <laughs> um, yeah. Seller's remorse is real. Especially seeing it done overall yeah. and what it could have been. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when we saw it, I would say I wasn't into cars all that much. Yeah, I'd play yeah. with your Hot Wheels, whatever. But um, I wasn't really interested, I would say, into working on the car itself. Um, you know, all at that point, all of my time was focused on sports, playing sports, you know, all year round, no matter what. So I kind of regret it too. But at the same time, we know it went into really good hands and it got done really well. So is what it is, but yeah. you know, there, there is a little bit of that in the background, but it's, my dad's more American cars. I'm more Japanese, that side of things. So yeah, there's differences there, but similarities at the same time. See, my, my family had the opposite thing happen, Brent, which is my dad held on to that RX-7 much to the ire of my mom because it has taken up half the garage for 40 years for, for everyone watching. It only has like 52,000 miles on it and it's been in the garage the entire time. It's like in new old stock condition. It's amazing, but um, this needs yeah. a can of two stroke to get it rolling. Uh, it probably would, man. It definitely, it, when you first get it started and the apex seals haven't resealed yet, it's burning oh, yeah. from oil, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it's like a tank, you know, tanks can do smoke screens. It's like that basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like, uh, so when it, it's like happens, you're permanently, I was say it's like you're permanently dumping a uh, sea foam into your, yes, yeah, your yeah. it gets better. Yeah every uh, after five minutes it goes away i don't that that little rx7 in particular that particular serial number has like the world's most amazing apex seals they always come back after about four or five times starting and letting it get up the temperature it doesn't smoke at all it's it's fascinating you know um but that car that car played you know I, a lot of a lot of a lot of fond memories with that it's part of my childhood and everything i one time i did a a, a face plant naturally because i'm an idiot um, while my mom was having a garage sale, she'd organized this massive garage sale, with like five houses and all these people there. And I just wipe out. And somebody didn't manage to not hurt my face, but I just split my knee like way open. You're like definitely going to need stitches kind of thing. And, um, my mom had to like abandon the entire thing to, um, uh, to drive me to the doctor. And the only car that was available was the RX-7. <laughs> and so like the whole time, you know, I'm bleeding everywhere. I've got my stuffed animal next to me or whatever. And like, and um and i'm i'm kind of crying at the stoplight you know and my mom's like are you okay steven it's, you're gonna be fine it's okay you're just it's gonna be fine and i'm and and she, and i asked her if i was gonna die and i was like little kid you know and she's like no yeah. honey and then she realized that i was talking about her driving because it was a manual because <laughs> she was like hopping around <laughs> it's a great uh, story of the family you know like oh my god and so that that car has been around but you know when it came time to like you know, I, the tempo was the first. Miles. Oh, it's only some, only some blood in, on the interior. <laughs> Please ignore oh. the stains on the seats. You know, yeah, like, pay no attention. And and top on Top Gear, it was like questionable excretions. You know, but no. <laughs> anyway. Um, but uh, so I, you know, I, I actually the tempo is what I drove a lot. You know, in high school and stuff like that. But I actually learned how to drive on a burgundy red Saab nine thousand turbo. Um, and yes, it broke constantly. Um. But then my, my, the first car I actually, um, I had a 99 Beetle, but like the first car that, um, that I actually like really was titled in my name and was my car um, that I paid for myself was a 1967 Ford Mustang, um, which is, it's kind of cool. That's the first car you have as a title, you know, that you, you titled yourself as an ancient car. Um, and that one was, uh, I had done a lot of studying and I knew how to buy a car that wasn't too rusty, except I was an idiot and I was wrong. <laughs> And it was actually very rusty. Hmm. Hmm. So that one went away, and then the uh, the the brown demon that it, not Dodge demon, but the brown 
the brown uh, money demon, take my money demon uh, Mustang that I have now is is uh, is uh, sort of my baby. It's a '65 Mustang with a four-speed and top loader and uh, transmission and her shifter and everything, and it's partially in pieces right now in my garage because I pulled the intake manifold off, and I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to put it back on. Um, so I'm saying uh, death rides a pale horse, but it sounds like the death of your ride wallet ride. rides a brown horse. Yeah, my Mustang, by the way, I'm forgetting that everyone doesn't know this, it's in red primer with uh, black Rust-Oleum uh, Shelby stripes, which are applied at the exact tapering dimension as they should be. Um, and my daily driver is, um, uh, is a 2016, I bought it new, it's a 2016 uh, Kona Blue Fiesta ST, which has ha less than half the displacement of the Mustang, but the same horsepower. And that, that's me. And they weigh the same, don't they? They weigh the, almost almost to the pound, you know. And the wheels are s switched around, so it's. Uh, <laughs> no, but and, and the, the last thing I'll say is that like um, I noticed, you know, like Charlie, you started with Honda, you ended up with um, with VW, and you know, and uh, and Brent, you know, like there's a lot of different types of cars in your history. Like it's interesting that like none of us are like fully like incredibly loyal to one brand. Like I. I, I was raised like my uncle, you know, the one that worked at Ford and as a union job, he has like 40 cars. And I mean, none of them are show cars or anything, but they're like every brand. Yeah. And, you know, my grandfather's classic cars, they were every brand. And so it's like, I, I love the fact that that's, those are my influences. Like, you know, introducing myself yeah. to all y'all that are watching this is like, I, I like everything, you know? Um, yeah. To an extent. Yes. Um, I, think I don't like Porsche Panameras. <laughs> um, disappointed uh, i think that actually brings up a very good uh you kind of touch on something you know i think we all appreciate uh cars automotive devices etc um if anything with four wheels two wheels maybe three i don't know um, morgan, morgan three wheeler sorry i mean look keep it weird uh, <laughs> i would try it at least once um, um, one sign me up <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think um, you know what we are, talk, you know, kind of touching and around uh, is like we generally just like cars, uh, whether it's driving them or just looking at them or thinking of owning them, um, and like we can appreciate them for for uh, a little bit of everything of what they are, and not just see the the brand loyalty. I mean, obviously, there's some there for. We all have our preferences, right? But um, the answer is get one of each. Yeah, that's the only logical conclusion. Coming from uh, cycling stuff, they they call that n plus one, where <laughs> n is the the number of cars in your garage, and uh, the what you know is the question of how many cars should you own at any given moment. It's n plus one. N plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Yeah. Or so how sort of much like space you could have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah finally have a garage now but it's filled with lumber um but you know just so you, just so for everyone watching so that's sort of an introduction on you know like a brief introduction like our histories and who we are and sort of you know what we drive now um yeah and that you know we're really excited to you know sort of start restart this journey you know with you know our podcast we recorded a while back the original um seven episodes but you know we're going to start doing video and start doing more content more regularly now and um you know, I mean, that's just sort of us in a nutshell, you know, like, you know, if you, you're looking for a place to hang out with people that are just, just hanging out, you know, we riding out this COVID thing together distantly. Um, and you don't want to go to a show that only talks about one brand of car or whatever, you know, this is, this is the place to be, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're just people hanging out trying to get by. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Just, by. The, just the lay people. Yeah. Well, except for Brent, Brent's a uh, higher crust. How am yeah. I higher crust? He holds his synthetic oil for his Mini Cooper with his pinky out when he's going to pour it in, you know? He's not denying it. He's not denying it. <laughs> <laughs> Just shaking his damn head at you. Yeah. I, as usual. Always. As usual. Yeah. Always. So, yeah. I shake uh, my head at myself. You notice I do that a lot. <laughs> oh, God. What did I say? <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> How do you reel that back in? Just uh, no, can't. It can't. It's all over. If you enjoyed Dag Show. 
please like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. We are also available on iTunes and Spotify by searching for Delusions of Automotive Grandeur. Thanks again for tuning in, and as always, may the grandeur of your automobiles be delusional. I think Brent, a lot of the people that, you know, that endured our, the podcast, the, the prequels to this, you know, um, they're going to be disappointed that I don't, I don't really look like, you know, like, uh, Fabio or something like, yes, they will be very, very disappointed that you don't. I mean, look I'm, like and I'm talking pre pre goose, you know, you got hit by goose at one point. I mean, post goose only improved it, right? <laughs> More ruggedly handsome. Yes, George exactly. Clooney. That's what people imagined I looked like, Charlie, before this whole thing. Began. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I would never have guessed that. I, I was thinking George Clooney, but I couldn't think of his name, so I said Fabio. <laughs> <laughs>